in my first year of business. I made a total of roughly <laughs> What's up everybody, Mario here with Nickel Prince. Today I'm revealing how much I made my first year in business. Not only am I going to be revealing my first year's earnings, I'm also going to be revealing to all of you what I did to make the money. All the legal and illegal ways. It makes it sound so bad, but we'll talk about that when we get there. A little bit of background, Neko Prince started off as a bunch of different things. Originally, what I wanted it to be was my own shop where I sold geeky and nerdy things. I love Pokemon, Dragon Ball, video games, just a bunch of nerdy stuff. And there was always a lot of things growing up that I wanted to see that weren't available, so I figured, you know what? I can figure out a way to make these things, make some cool shirts that I wanted, make all the cool decals that I always wanted to have on my car or my laptop or whatever it may be. And that was the original idea for Neko Prince. And as I I was trying to figure out how to do that, I also thought I could do custom work. So I started Neko Prints mainly doing custom work and then eventually opened up a little Etsy shop where I had all my nerdy things. There were a lot of different ways that I started to make money. My biggest stream of revenue at the time of starting was custom work and I had to really hustle to get my name out there. Obviously I just started a t-shirt business, I started an Instagram and didn't have any followers, nobody knew who I was. So one way I started bringing customers was reaching out through Instagram, specifically to people that I already knew had their own businesses. Those were gonna be my first customers. Those were gonna be the first ones that I targeted. So I did that, I started reaching out to a couple of friends who had their own businesses. A few of them said, yeah, let's do it. And I got to work. Started doing the jobs for my friends and in the process of me doing these jobs, I also started opening up my Etsy shop. Now this is where things take a dark turn and get um, a bit illegal. Honestly, I'm making it sound worse than it really is. What I mean by illegal is I was actually uploading copyright stuff to my Etsy shop. So I was doing a lot of Pokemon shirts, anime shirts, Dragon Ball, Legend of Zelda, Super Mario, just a bunch of nerdy, geeky things that I really liked. I knew all of these things were copyright. I just didn't exactly, you know, know what would happen. I did watch some YouTube videos of some people that, that would say that their shop got shut down. And I figured, you know what, I'm just gonna do it. And when the time comes, I'll deal with it. I didn't really expect to, I guess, make much money off of it. So I started adding a bunch of different products to that. You know, I started adding decals, I started adding shirts, I started doing canvas prints. I had these super cool etched glass shadow boxes that I will be showing all of you how to make them in a future video, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. You know, I had a bunch of stuff on there that I was I was proud of. <laughs> I thought a lot of these things were super cool. Some of these things were original products of mine, like the shadow boxes. So my Etsy shop actually started getting a few sales and started picking up a bit more than I expected it to. So I have the Etsy shop going on on the side, getting all that stuff done. And at the same time, I'm also still trying to grow my custom printing. So I got my friend's business shirts done. Those were a hit. He loved them. He posted them on his Instagram. A lot of his people really liked them. And a couple people started messaging me for some quotes, maybe a couple shirts here and there. Uh, not too many came through. It was mostly all just quotes. That's usually how it is, especially at the beginning. I probably wasn't giving the best prices because I, I was still figuring things out. But I did get a couple customers out of that, which in turn allowed me to have more content for my Instagram in order to feel comfortable enough, in order to start reaching out to local businesses and offering my services. So I started getting more customers that way. I started reaching out to local businesses in my area. I properly introduced myself. I didn't want to sound spammy. Hey, how's it going? My name is Mario. If it was a food business, I would compliment them on how good their food looked, on how tasty it looked. If I've eaten there before, I would tell them how delicious it was. You know, I kind of got to butter them up to get in there and get personal. That's, I think that's one of the more important things you have to do. You have to get personal with your customers, especially if you're the one reaching out to them. So that way they know that you're not just there for their business. You're there because you support local and a lot of the times they reciprocate that because they also want to support local. Now, if it was a retail shop, I would pretty much do the same thing. I would tell them how good all their products look, how great some of their products are, if I've used them before. And honestly, if I hadn't tried them, if I hadn't tried their food or, or whatever product or service that they're selling or offering, I would just formally introduce myself as I said before. Hey, my name is Mario. I see that you offer this, this, and that. I'm a local in your area and I love the things that you offer. I just wanted to reach out to let you know that I'm doing custom products such as custom shirts, custom cups, etc. And if you ever need anything, I would be more than happy to work with you. I think that we could make a great partnership if you ever need anything or if you want to reach out just go ahead and send me a dm or here's my phone number sometimes they see the message and they leave you in red a lot of the times most of the times they'll actually end up responding back to you saying thank you i appreciate it we'll keep you in mind for whenever we need anything or i appreciate the offer but we already have somebody that does all our custom stuff this and that or whatever it may be and then a handful of times they'll tell you oh i've actually been needing somebody to do this what are your rates or can we talk a little bit more and then that's when you start to go into all the details. I got a good amount of customers that way, reaching out via Instagram and introducing myself. And then those customers, along with my friends that I did the shirts for at the beginning, would get asked, hey, where'd you get your shirts? And obviously they weren't gonna say, oh, online at Vistaprint or whatever. They would say, oh, my buddy over at Nyko Prints. Here, let me give you his information. Let me give you his Instagram. Let me give you his phone number. Let me tell you that word of mouth goes a long way. And what goes even further than that is a presentation of your work. So always make sure that you do the best possible job that you can do. So we have that custom work starting to come in little by little. It's not consistent. 
It's not something that I'm getting every single day, but a lot of times when I didn't have customer coming in, I had a couple orders I had to do for Etsy. Now, of course, there was some downtime where I didn't have either or. Now, when that time came along, I would try to see other ways to try to get my name out there. One of them being Facebook. Now on Facebook, there's a bunch of different things you can do to get your name out there. You can post on your timeline so that way all your friends can see it. You can post in groups, which depending on how you do it can be a bit spammy, but it can work. And you can post the Facebook Marketplace, which Facebook Marketplace could be hit or miss. I feel like before it used to be a bit better for custom work than it is now. But even today, I'm still posting on Facebook Marketplace and getting a few hits here and there. Don't ever rule out any of your options, especially if they're free. If you can post on something for free, just, just post it. There's a chance somebody can see it and you can make a couple bucks. So on Facebook, I did post on my timeline, but that wasn't my main concern. I didn't really care about the people on my timeline that saw it because, because most of them are my friends that are already on my Instagram, which either already saw it or they're just a lot of people that just don't even live in the country. <laughs> when you create your Instagram business page, you're able to also create a Facebook page. So I just linked both of them together. So whenever I uploaded to my Instagram, it would automatically upload to my Facebook. And then that Facebook page, I just updated all the personal information on there with my phone number, email, and how to contact me. And then the groups. When it came to posting on groups to be able to get customers for my business. It was different each time I wanted to post depending on the group. I joined a lot of local buying and selling groups. On those, it's super easy to post. You just go on there and start a discussion or put an item up for sale and post it. For the local garage, yard sale, buy and sell groups, that's really all you have to do. Now, when it came down to a more niche group, let's say an anime group where I wanted to sell a Dragon Ball shirt, that's when things got a bit different. It's a lot harder to go on there and say, Look at the t-shirt I made. If you want to buy it, message me or check out this link. That's spam. <laughs> Especially if you don't know anybody in the group. If you just decide to join a group and you start posting your products, you're going to get blocked. A lot of these groups are already their own community. So people there know each other. No matter how big the group is, there's going to be a consistent amount of people that post and that comment. After a while, it becomes a community. You know, you know who posts there. You know who posts the funny stuff. You know who posts the cool stuff. You know who puts the comments. So if just a random person comes in and says, look at what I have to sell, they're gonna be like, who are you, get out. I mean, you would do the same thing, right? If somebody comes up to your house, knocks on your door and tries to sell you just a bunch of random stuff, most of the time you're just there like, no, just go away, go, just go away. Add some value to the group. As you're adding value, people are gonna respect your opinion more. And then you can one day come in and be like, look guys, I made this, this is just something that I do, it's a hobby of mine, it's my business, it's something that I'm trying to grow, etc. whatever it may be. If you guys like it, you can get it here, click the link here, etc. Then people would be a bit more responsive to your post. People would be more willing to support or share the post at least. Because you've made a name for yourself, people know who you are, they know you're a real person, you're not just somebody trying to make a quick buck. So how about Facebook Marketplace? Facebook Marketplace has changed a lot ever since I started posting on there when I first started Nickel Prince. The way Facebook Marketplace is set up right now is it's kind of like eBay now where you just list a product just to sell. It's a bit harder to offer services because of the format that they have their selling process. That doesn't mean it's impossible. The easiest way to do it is just go on there, go that you're gonna list a product, add images of all your custom products, and in the description box mention a little bit of your services and what you do and where you can get contacted. Facebook asks you if you can ship the product. I just put yes and I just put free shipping. The reason being is because nobody's gonna buy it. <laughs> nobody's actually gonna buy this listing. So every time what somebody's gonna do is message you. They'll see your listing, they'll see what it is, and then they'll message you for whatever they need. That's probably all I did for the first six or seven months of starting Echo Prints. It was my Etsy shop and my custom printing. Afterwards, in that same year, I started messing around with TikTok a little bit, and I made a quick video on how I printed some Power Rangers masks, and that kind of took off. It didn't go viral or anything like that, but I think it got maybe five or 6,000 views, and within those days or week that the video was performing, a lot of people were going from that video to my Etsy shop because I put in the video, you can get it at my Etsy shop, and then I put the name of the Etsy shop. So that drove some good traffic as well to get some sales. That was pretty much the end of the first year. In the first year I was doing my Etsy shop as well as my custom printing. Now I was doing everything part time. I was doing everything after work because I did have a full time job. So everything that I would do, I would do either after work or after everyone went to sleep in the house. But I think for the amount of effort that I put into it, I got a decent return back. So time to answer the big question. How much did I make my first year in business? I don't have an exact number because I wasn't keeping track of everything but I do have a very close estimate. In my first year of business, I made a total of roughly 20 to $23,000. And that's net, that's after paying for all my supplies, all my equipment, whatever I used. Honestly, in my opinion, that, that's not bad for working part time. Was it tiring? Super. It was definitely tiring having to go to sleep at two o'clock in the morning sometimes to wake up the next morning to go to work. Was it worth it? Definitely. 
All that extra money helped me build up my business even more. It helped me get better equipment and honestly, it helps with life. Like, you know, who, who doesn't need the extra money? Whether it be to pay bills or to just take some time off and go on a little vacation. So did this video motivate you to keep going on your business? Is the amount of money that I talked about more or less than what you expected? Is it good for you? Is it nothing for you? Let me know down in the comments below what you think. I would love to hear your thoughts. Remember the number that I gave is what I made based on the amount of work that I put in. Somebody else that puts in the same amount of work that I did can make 10 times more or can make absolutely nothing. As an entrepreneur, results will definitely vary. So don't be discouraged if the number that I mentioned is not what you expected. Pretty much wraps it up for today's episode, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching as always. Please make sure to hit that like button. It helps out the channel a huge amount. And catch you guys next time. Peace.